Thank you. Hi, sir. Good evening. Hey, evening. Thank you for joining. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. I hope you guys are able to view it. Yes, sir. Okay, great. All right. So um, let me begin by thanking everyone. And yeah, I will definitely give my introduction, Abu. No problem. <laughs> so yeah, let me um, let me start by thanking everyone. You know, on a weekend, you guys have taken your time out. Um, thank you so much for uh, doing that. And uh, now let me talk about that why we are here. Okay. So my name is Vikas, and basically I have been working on VMware environment since 2010. So in 2010, I I got first introduced to VMware technology. Yeah. I have been working in IT from 2005. And uh, yeah, I have, I don't know, approximately about 18, 19 years. And VMware technology is something that I've been working on since 2010, close to about some 13, 14 years, approximately. Okay. Now, the intention is to give you training on VMware. And let me be very honest with you. It's not that, you know, I have read VMware somewhere or I have learned it by heart and then I'm telling you. Okay. Day in and day out, I do VMware. Okay. My EMIs are paid by VMware technology. So it is because of VMware technology, I am able to yeah, do things in you know life as the regular ones, pay EMIs and you know, go out for a movie and all that. So yeah, VMware technology is very important uh, in my life and I have been always around this. Now my intention is to tell you that why VMware is important. Now in today's world, you know, you might have yeah, so many technologies out there now. And you might have a question that, you know, why should I learn VMware or what is, or what's in it for me? That's a very relevant question in today's DNA and age. I mean, you need to know that why it is relevant for you. I mean, if it's not relevant for you, there is no point, you know, you giving your time over here. So let me begin by talking about that. Why is it relevant? Okay. So as you are able to view my screen, okay, I have not taken any snippet anywhere. I'm just going to show you real, you know, uh, just live that you know why VMware is important, okay? Nothing fancy I'm going to try over here, but yeah, let me show it to you why it is important. So when you open up Google, okay? So when you go open up Google, just type over here, VMware revenue. Okay. I hope my browser is working over here and very good it does, okay? Now you would have a lot of URLs over here basically talking about VMware, okay? Now what I want to focus on is basically on this URL, okay? Let me open up this URL. You can also open it. I mean, all of you, you know, you can just do it side by side what I'm doing, okay? And you see a trend over here. So company as a VMware, if I talk about, they are basically talking about a revenue history from 2005 to 2023, okay? So in 2005, they had a revenue of 0.39 billion. And now when you see Zoom pass to 2023, they have a revenue of 13 billion, okay? This is annual. Now, my only point is that if a company is dying or if a technology is not relevant in the market, how would the revenue grow? I mean, this is something that, you know, I really uh, would like to understand uh, that, you know, if a company is dying or if the technology is not relevant in the market, why would the revenue grow? Okay, I'm not saying that other technologies are not relevant. Of course, others will be relevant as well. Okay, But I'm just justifying that VMware is also relevant. You cannot take that into consideration that VMware is absolutely no longer required. It is an obsolete, outdated technology and you don't need to know about it. No, I mean, if you have that thought process, I'm here to change that. Okay. So you absolutely need VMware in today's world. Starting off, 
by revenue that yes company has you know a, an increasing revenue okay i would also show you in the end that you know are there any jobs available you know that you know you all everyone has a question you know in the mind as a professional when i learn something is it going to help me professionally am i going to gain some salary hike how would i get it is it going to help me get an increment of course it will okay and in today's world i mean i understand that you know folks are joining right around the world but i think you know one portal which is common for everyone is basically linkedin okay so if you basically hop you know hover over to linkedin and if you just type or wait there you know hiring vmware and you basically do a you know check the post all the latest ones over there you would absolutely find that you know there are so many people hiring over there okay so vmware is relevant and i would show you on linkedin that you know how you can basically uh, make sure that your uh, um you know your skills uh, match in terms of vmware at the end of the training what you can add in your resume so that you know at the end of the training you know if you basically tell someone that i know vmware they would ask you okay tell me what do you know about vmware now there are a few points that you have to mention on the resume so what the what those points would be uh, definitely i will be assisting you with that how to basically you know look for vmware opportunities what you can do to set alerts job criteria so that you get notified about it and then you know you can apply um to those opportunities follow the recruiters follow the managers who are basically for, you know hiring and then basically uh, you know uh, apply for the opportunity we also provide labs so it's not that you know whatever i'm going to tell you you would have a question that where do i practice it i mean where would i try all these practicals so no problem you do not have to invest in getting a lab we will provide you labs and it's uh, you know absolutely latest and greatest lab that we provide you and you would have access to it you can try out all the practicals okay so we are going to do that as well okay so to summarize till now vmware is relevant okay so let me basically get my blackboard over here that apologies for the horrible writing um it is absolutely relevant okay first thing the technology second i would definitely tell you at the end um, that you know how this is going to help you in your resume what you need to mention in your resume that you are a professional who knows about vmware and not only theoretically you also know the practicals <clears throat> so this is something that i will definitely tell you and then in the end you know what we need is basically a hike okay so how do you search on linkedin what you do how to get going about it this is something that i will definitely tell you okay so this is something what my intention is that at the end of the training um you basically know about all these things and it basically helps you professionally there is no point in learning something that is not going to help you okay there is no point in learning uh, for example you know computer language which is basically outdated you know if i ask you to learn something which is not relevant right now there is no point in doing that okay so vmware is absolutely relevant if you learn it it will help you it will help you get a raise be sure about it okay that's is what my intention is now the format of the training is that if you have any questions while i am basically you know telling you about the technology please feel free to you know uh, post your questions okay the training will be basically um, thank you for asking stanley the training will be basically about um, i would say 15 or to or 16 classes okay so you can basically think of it as eight weekends that should be the training criteria i mean in terms of uh, the duration of the training okay is there any eligible criteria i mean there is no eligibility i mean it's a training i mean it's a it's a new technology that you are learning so if you have a prior experience if you know about what an operating system is if you know about something about networks that should be good enough okay i mean there is nothing very you know aggressive that you need to know i mean i would not say that so that should be good enough uh, so nand kumar says that i do have seven plus experience in the cloud and says this is possible to shift to vmware absolutely i mean you 
Uh, okay, let me correct you over here. You do not have to shift to VMware. You have to include VMware. Okay, in today's world, I mean, the more technologies you know, it's more better for you. You are in sales. It will basically assist you. It will basically help you. You have to just add VMware. Okay, you do not have to basically just shift completely over there. Okay, training um, schedule. Um, so training schedule will be basically the official curriculum. Okay, so let me show you basically what the uh, official curriculum would be. So again, you basically just go on to Google. And when you go to Google, uh, just basically type over there, um, VMware, vSphere, ICM. Okay, ICM basically means Install, Configure, and Manage. Okay, this is version seven, uh, but I'm looking for version eight over here. This is basically version eight. And whatever the official curriculum basically talks about, okay, we are basically going to cover all that. And I would be covering few things which are not mentioned over here. So I believe that as a VMware admin, you should know about it. Though the official training does not talk about it, but yes, so we will be definitely talking about it. Okay. Um, finish with CAM, with certificates. Okay. Now, let me tell you a couple of things over here. Now, this training that we are providing you, it is basically not an official training. So VMware says that if you have to do the certification, you have to go with an official training. Okay, and the official training you have, you basically need to play, pay thousand plus dollars depending on the location you are. If you are in a um, different location apart from India, then you would have to pay two thousand, four thousand dollars depending on where you are. If you are in Europe somewhere, then you would have to pay close to about three thousand euros. So of course we are not charging those hefty amounts. We are here to only impart the knowledge. Okay. If you have to do the certification, then you have to enroll in official VMware training. And depending on the location, you have to pay that good amount. And then, you know, at the end of the training, you will be able um, to, you know, appear for the exam and get a valid certification. Okay. So yeah, we are not authorized institutes of VMware. If we were, we would have been charging you that hefty amount that I spoke about, 3,000 euros or 1,000 plus dollars. We are not doing that. So we are imparting education over here. So whatever is mentioned in the official curriculum, we are covering all those points and things beyond that. Uh, be absolutely sure about it, okay? Don't keep a hint of doubt. Now, how much package can I expect? Now, this is... Uh, answer that I would not be able to answer because it depends on what your package is, where you are, which location, blah, blah, blah. So many things are there, okay? But you will definitely can get a hike, okay? Uh, this is something that we can basically talk about it offline. Uh, you can reach uh, you can reach out to us on WhatsApp. I can basically then talk about the pay package. Let's not do that uh, over here on a general uh, forum. Um any chance of teaching NSX? I mean, that's a different topic. Let's not combine, you know, a couple of topics over here. So yeah, we can basically talk about that later. Uh, then you have a question that I'm a network engineer, so I can learn VMware. Absolutely. You are a sister, you are a network engineer, a sysadmin, Linux engineer, database engineer, starting off in IT. You should absolutely learn VMware because VMware is a platform. Remember, it's a platform where you are running your applications. And mind you, you are running anything and everything on VMware. You can run SAP, ERP, Exchange, SQL, you know, host of applications. Just name an application, right? And you can run it on VMware platform. So it is important for you to get yourself familiar with the platform on which of course, your production applications are going to work, okay? So it is for everyone, okay? Um, as a desktop support, can I shift? Oh, sure. You can learn VMware and then absolutely, you can make a, uh, you know, switch. It's not that, you know, I started off as a desktop engineer. So when in 2005 that I was telling you, I basically was a desktop engineer and now I'm basically doing VMware. So of course you can shift. After this training, can I go directly for the jobs? Yes, you can go directly for the jobs. Any certificate for VMware? I mean, we would not be able to provide you the official certification like I mentioned earlier. Uh, for that, you have to go for the training. Uh, 7.0 link, we can talk about it later. Certification, we have already talked about it. Um, mechanical domain, am I eligible for the course? I mean, if you are planning to move into IT, then this course is absolutely relevant for you, okay? Do we have scope for data center virtualization certification? 
uh, certification i've already spoken about it if you have further questions please reach out to us on whatsapp okay are you going to go through horizon as well uh, no uh, the answer would be because vmware has got many products and every uh, product has a different training okay now let me quickly take you to vmware website so that you know you basically see that how many products are over there okay when vmware started off in 2002 or 2003 it basically had two basic core products you know it was the hypervisor and the guy who manages it is the vcenter okay now in today's world vmware has basically close to about 177 products okay now vmware has been acquired by broadcom so that is why you see vmware by broadcom over here that's the reason however if you check the products that vmware has it has plethora of you know products you know right from anything to everything okay so if you just click on products over here you see how many products that you they have okay you can run vmware on any public cloud for example alibaba aws google ibm oracle you know dell cloud you basically name it and you know you can run uh, vmware on, on everything it's not that vmware can only be run in a private environment of course it can be run in a public environment and you basically look into the options you can do a cloud management desktop security networking edges app access from anywhere uh, you can do tanzu also vmware so vmware can basically give you a product you name it and vmware will have a product for you right from anything to everything if you are telco if you're not a telco anything vmware can give you so if you see a list over here they have 179 products you know that they can offer you and look at the categories they can basically provide you a product in any platform you talk about right from telco right from anything to everything okay now i have already spoken about the exam um, so i would not be repeating myself because yeah this is going to take some time uh, in a, in a nutshell uh, your answer is no uh, stanley you cannot uh, enroll for the exam without the authorized institute training now let me talk let me start off with the training now uh, so let me talk about that why vmware okay the first question comes into mind that why do you need this technology what was you know what was happening without this technology i mean people still had data centers people still had you know uh, servers up and running so why do you need vmware let me answer that question first okay so again let me also answer <laughs> let me also request one thing uh, this training is for you okay so my intention is that at the end of this training module you should know what the technology is my intention is not to come over here and basically you know uh, just you know quickly go through the classes finish up the course and that's about it that is not my intention my intention is that you understand what i am you know what i'm uh, trying to explain you if you have any questions if there's any jargon if there's any word that you do not understand my humble request please ask please remember we are not in a physical class if we were in a physical class i mean i could have easily you know look at your face and i could tell you that you know whether you have understood or not however we are on zoom now in zoom there is no way for me to figure out that whether have you understood or not so my intention and my request is basically please ask if you do not ask your queries i will assume that you are understanding everything because there is no way for me to figure out that you know whether you have understood or not okay so my intention is what i'm about to tell you if there's anything that you do not understand if you have any questions please ask okay the training is for you it is important that you understand this training okay all right so let's get started now now let me answer the question first why why do you need vmware okay what is the importance let me answer that question first and then we'll basically uh, talk more about it so let's say this is a year 2002 okay we are in 2023 but let's take an example okay hypothetical situation you are in 2002 okay now in 2002 if you were running a production environment in production environment you had no vmware i mean there was nothing called as vmware okay so it was absolutely not there so what would you do in to the in 2002 so in 2002 you were basically running everything when it comes to production 
basically on physical servers so if you had to run your environment in 2002 you were basically dependent on physical servers you needed physical servers okay now the question comes that if i need a physical server how many basically for anything and everything so for example in your organization you would have different environments you would have a test environment you would have a development environment then you would have a qa environment and then in the end you might have a production environment now it depends on your client it depends on the client that you are working for how many environments that they have for example if you are working for a pharmaceutical company if you are working for for example a bank if you are working for a credit card company okay then they would have multiple environments why because that's the nature of the you know the domain that they are in they need to make sure that whatever they do on production nothing impacts the customer everything should be up and running so if you have to deploy a microsoft patch if you have to deploy a linux patch you absolutely you absolutely want to make sure that nothing will impact the production the website is going to stay up there would be no concerns over there and everything would work fine so for that for you to get that confidence that when you put that patch in nothing is going to happen you need to test it you need to try it until and unless you don't test it you don't try it how would you get to know that you know something is working for you or something is not working for you okay so that is why you have multiple environments now of course if you have multiple environments you have to pay okay so the question is that who is going to pay i mean it's not going to be me and you who will be paying for it it is the company who has to pay for it okay so you might get a lot of environments you might not get a lot of environments depends on your client now for example let's say that you have a lot of environments let's say that you're working for a pharmaceutical company and it has a lot of environments okay now you would also have a lot of applications think about it it's not like you know you would only have one application and that's about it you would have tons of application in an organization you know people log in people log out internal websites external websites so many other products everything has a website uh, as an application associated to it so you would have a lot of servers you would have a lot of applications in your environment now the question comes that if you have to run an application or if you want to try out something in your environment where are you going to deploy it remember we are in 2002 okay keep that in mind so in 2002 if you have to deploy anything of course you need a physical server how do i get a physical server you're going to call up hp you will call up dell you would call up any other company you know that was there in 2002 and you will basically tell them that i need a server i need 32 gb of ram i need basically a cpu in it i need some hard drives in it okay make sure that you give me a 3 year contract for the warranty repairs and yeah and the vendor will basically tell you some amount you have to pay some amount then they will basically take 3 to 4 weeks and then you get the box now when you get the box you have to rack and stack it deploy the operating system get the cablings in place and then basically your server will be available for you okay so think about it this is one server for one application for one environment you have deployed the server only in the test environment now if you have to run this application as production of course you need to have it in the development you need to have it in the qa and then in the end you of course need to have it in the production so for application number 1 for your first application you need to have four servers why because when you are going to do something when you are going to run your production application you of course need to make sure that all the patches are working well you need to go through your change request the itil process making sure that everything is working well this is only for the first application so for application number 1 bare minimum you would have four servers in your environment to make sure that you know everything is working fine because you have got four different environments test development queue and prod okay think about it this is only one application in your environment you would not have one you would have tons of application you would have so many applications in your environment and for every application you need to buy four physical servers okay and what if if that server goes down 
if there's any problem with the server what are you what are you going to do you have to basically wait you have to basically wait that you know let that technician come in do the troubleshooting get your server up and then you know you will be able to basically try out the things so you do not have a spare over here if you start keeping a spare then think about you know the cost which will go up okay so in a physical environment you had a lot of challenges you had a lot of limitations now let me highlight them one by one what the challenges were if you plan to run a complete physical environment the first is basically capex which is capital expenditure when you have to buy a server who is going to pay for it of course we are not going to pay from our monthly salaries it has to be company it has to be the it budget of the company from where the amount has to be allocated okay so end of the day it is the company who is paying for it okay once you pay for the servers then what then the next challenge is opex which is operational expenditure what does that mean that means that if you have 100 200 300 400 servers physical boxes with you where are you going to keep them you cannot keep them in your home you cannot keep them in the office you need a dedicated place what is that dedicated place that dedicated place is basically called a data center so you would have to basically put your servers in a data center okay now of course data center facility is managed by for example at&t or any other provider out there okay at&t will charge money for it they are not going to let you you know keep it over there for free they would say that you know you want to place 300 servers you want you know so much space in my data center so much electricity cooling power um this is the kind of contract you want uh someone should be there always you know making sure that if you raise a request you know someone should be able to go in the data center and you know do that thing for you so basically at&t is going to charge money for that okay now if you have 100 300 physical boxes you need people to manage it you cannot expect one guy to manage it okay then you basically have to invest in a lot of folks you know to basically manage that environment for you okay so this is basically the operational expense when you buy the servers you keep them up and running the next problem is about utilization what do you mean by utilization is a problem for example this is my windows machine over here if i open my task manager over here you basically see that you know my cpu is running at 2% 4% you know something something my utilization is now this resources that i have on the cpu for example this is a physical machine okay my cpu is only 2% getting utilized can i share this cpu with someone else do i have ability to share the resource with someone else i mean i cannot so for example you have a laptop okay now on your laptop you might have a 16 gb ram you might have a 32 gb ram depending on what you have and if your laptop is only consuming 8 gb of ram can you say that you know let me open my laptop take out the ram card and put it in a different machine and when the utilization goes high i will basically put the ram card back in my laptop i mean you cannot do that i mean when you have a laptop it is basically a machine which can only utilize the resources you cannot basically share the resources of a physical machine in a physical environment you just don't open up the box take out the resources put in a physical machine and when the other machine needs it you basically put them back i mean that is not something that you can do so in a physical machine what you have only stays with that machine it cannot be shared so the problem is if your machine is not utilizing cpu is not utilizing memory there is nothing that can be done about it because those resources will stay on that physical machine only so utilization is a big challenge okay the next problem that you have and one of the biggest ones is basically lcm what is lcm it is basically life cycle manager okay explain that to me now let me again talk about it that what lcm is so for example the year is 2000 let's say 14 okay in 2014 you basically called up hp and you told them that you i want a server hp said okay i'll give you a server 
you basically told HP that I need this amount of RAM, this amount of CPU, and yeah, give me a server. So you paid HP and HP gave you a server. Okay. Now in 2014, for example, you installed Windows 2012 as an operating system over here. Okay, and it was working well. I mean, you HP gave you drivers, firmwares, and everything it gave you, and you made sure that you know the servers was all running well, no concerns over there. Now you are in 2023. You basically decide to upgrade the operating system, the same hardware. Now, instead of running 2012, you want to run, for example, 2022, the operating system for Microsoft. When you go to the HP website, you will not find the drivers over there. You would call up HP and you will say, hey, HP, I got the server in 2014. I'm basically looking for drivers for Windows 2022. I cannot find it on your website. Please give me the drivers. HP will say, sorry, I cannot give you the drivers because your machine is end of life. Throw away this box and get a new one and then install Windows 2022 on it. This is what HP is going to tell you. Okay, Because every hardware that you buy is basically valid for five years. After five years, you are, you are supposed to throw that box and get a new one. I mean, if you want to drag on with that box for a couple of more years, of course you can do that. But officially, HP will say, throw away that box and get a new one. Okay. Now, keep in mind, when you have to throw away this box, okay, let's say that you say, all right, HP, as per your recommendation, I will throw away this box and I'll get a new one. Now, always keep in mind, when you are throwing away this box, you are not going to get anything in return. Okay. It's not like, you know, when you, when you buy a new car and after five, six years, you sell that car, you get some money, right? It's not that you know you're giving car for free. Of course, you're going to get some money uh, from that car. Okay. Here is not that case. Here, when you have to dispose or when you have to basically discard the server, when you have to throw away the server, you have to give money. You are not getting anything in return, mind you. You are only paying for it even to discard it. Why? Because you will be looking for a proper authorized disposal vendor you will be basically looking for an authorized vendor who is iso certified to basically dispose the hardware you just cannot keep it somewhere on the road and you know hope that you know someone will take it and you are good for go and you are good to go your responsibility is over sorry that's not going to happen okay so when you have to throw away the box you just cannot keep it somewhere you have to basically you know google search find out you know who's the authorized vendor in your area reach out to them, tell them that these many boxes you want to throw, they will basically do a calculation. They will tell you the price that you have to pay. Then you pay, you pay that price upfront. Then they would come in your data center as per the scheduled time. They will pick up the hardware and take the things with them. This is what is going to happen. Okay. How do I know this? Because I've done this activity. I was doing this data center upgradation, maintenance, LCM. You know, I've done this so many times. That is why I know that you have to throw away the box. You are not going to get any money out of it. You have to pay money for it. Okay, keep this in mind. And then you have to get a new box. Basically, when you get the new box, you have to rack it in the data center, install the operating system, get the application moved. And then basically, you know, get it up online, get the DNS and everything functioning, and then you will be good to go. This is what you will have to do. Trust me, this is no fun. I mean, initially, you might find, you know, LCM a lot of fun, you know, throwing away the servers, getting a new one, doing the restore and, you know, backup and everything. But trust me, after some time, you will start hating it. Okay. LCM is no fun. Trust me. Okay. Now, these are the challenges that you will have if you are running a complete physical environment. Okay, now this is something that you are bound to run into. It's not like, you know, uh, you would not have these problems. Of course, you would have these problems because you're only running a physical environment and this is going to happen with every organization. Okay, whosoever is basically running a physical environment, you are bound to run into these issues. Now here, we have answered the question that what the challenges are with a physical environment. If anyone has not understood this point, whatever I've told you, 
the challenges of running a physical environment please let me know again keep in mind this training is for you you have questions please ask if you don't ask questions i will assume that you know whatever i told you it is okay for you you understood that part okay so we understand that challenges of a physical environment now the question is what do we do what is the solution to the problem that you told me right now the solution to the problem is hypervisor okay what is hypervisor hypervisor is a term okay it is only a term it is you know like like you say cloud what is a cloud cloud is basically a term okay so it is only a term now the question comes okay this is a term what will it do what is hypervisor actually doing for me now let me answer that question for you okay so basically let's take an example that you bought a desktop okay let's say that you reached out to hp you called up dell and you got a desktop from them okay or you assembled a desktop whatever it may be and on this desktop for example you have 32 gb of ram you gave a 8 core processor you put a hard drive over here you have one network card okay you have one video card for example and you got a good machine for yourself now on this machine for example you basically decide to install windows 11 let's say that you decided that you will go with the windows 11 operating system and you install it on it now my question is who was controlling the ram over here who has the control of 32 gb ram who has the control of the 8 core processor of course it is the operating system it is windows 11 who is basically in charge okay now whatever application you decide to run on windows 11 it is windows 11 who is going to basically give you know ram cpu the processing whatever it has to do it is basically windows 11 you know who is authorizing who is giving you the you know the resources okay so windows 11 is installed directly on the hardware so what you did was that you got a desktop and on that desktop the hard drive was absolutely blank let's say there was nothing on it it was a raw blank hard drive okay then what you do is you basically install the windows operating system directly on it this is what you did okay so windows 11 basically has the control okay it is the operating system which has the complete control and then the applications that you are running they will basically request the windows 11 operating system give me some ram give me some cpu this is what i need to do for example firefox chrome office whatever it is windows 11 will keep allocating the resources and that is how your application will work now what would happen is here i am only running one operating system on one machine of course if you want to do a dual boot and all that which you can do but at one time you are only running one operating system on one hardware this is what you are doing okay in comes hypervisor what basically hypervisor is saying is if you have a hardware okay here you might have for example i'm just saying 100 gb of ram okay you have 12 core processor you have hard drive you have one network card or multiple network cards okay so hypervisor is saying that earlier you only ran one operating system on it now what you will do is on this hardware you will install hypervisor so earlier we deployed windows 11 on it right here i am going to deploy hypervisor once the hypervisor is deployed then what i can do is i can run multiple operating systems over here so for example i can run windows 10 i can run windows 11 i can run ubuntu i can run centos over here okay then basically i can run over here fedora i can run windows 2012 2019 and red hat 7 8 whatever you want okay so what i'm doing now is that on my physical hardware on my blank hard drive i basically decided to install hypervisor i did not install linux or windows i basically installed the hypervisor okay 
And then within that hypervisor, I basically created a lot of virtual machines, Windows 10, 11, you know, 2019, Red Hat and all that. I did that. Now, the beauty over here is every virtual machine thinks that they are the only ones running. So Red Hat will over here think that, you know, I am the only one running on this hardware. There is nothing, there's no one else, you know, running over here. This is what the Red Hat will, you know, think about it. Windows 2012 will think over here, I'm the only one running. There is no one, you know, uh, running over here. I'm the only one. I'm the sole king over here. Okay. So hypervisor is basically fooling all the operating systems and thinking that, you know, you are the only one running over here and there is no one else running over here. This is what basically hypervisor is doing for you. So in a nutshell, hypervisor is a operating system or an application which can basically run a lot of virtual machines on a single box without in impacting one another. So it's not like, you know, Red Hat is going to disturb Windows or Windows is going to disturb Red Hat. I mean, it's not going to do that. Everything, you know, everyone will, you know, live together on the machine like a good, happy family. Okay. This is what is going to happen over here. So in a nutshell, hypervisor is an operating system or hypervisor is an application on which you can run multiple operating systems without impacting one another. This is what hypervisor is going to do for you. Okay. So if I talk about hypervisor, they are basically two types of hypervisors. There is a type one and there is a type two. Okay. What is the type one hypervisor? So when I talk about a type one hypervisor, Think about it like an operating system. This is a complete operating system. So for example, I give you a laptop. Okay, let's say that you have a laptop. And on this laptop, you do not have any operating system. There is no OS. Okay, no OS is here on the laptop. And then I basically ask you to install a Windows 10 on this operating system. So what you will do is you will basically take a Windows 10. You will make a bootable USB. You will plug the USB on the laptop. And then basically you will install Windows 10. Okay. To install Windows 10, you don't need any other thing. Windows 10 is a self-sufficient operating system. It has anything and everything, you know, to run itself. You do not have to blue, you do you do not have to boot from floppy, you do not have to install any third-party tool, you do not have to download any exe file or any you know bootloader from the internet, then Windows 10 is going to work for you. No. You just basically take a good plain laptop, take a Windows 10 uh, ISO, you know, burn it on a USB, plug that USB on the laptop, install it, and you're good to go. Why? Because Windows 10 is a complete operating system. Okay. Similarly, it will the same functionality will work for a type one hypervisor. So a type one hypervisor is a complete operating system. You get an ISO file. So what you're doing is you basically take the hardware for example this might be this might be an hp server dell server you know and then you basically install the hypervisor you know on the hardware directly just like you were installing windows 10 on the laptop directly here you are installing the type 1 hypervisor on the hardware directly this is what you're going to do okay do you have any idea on the multi vendor support very good question thank you for asking let me quickly show it to you Good point that you raised over here. So, um, when you talk about you know which vendors are supported uh, for you to install uh, ESXi on, you just basically need to go to Google again and just type over there VMware compatibility guide. Yeah, just go to Google. Just type VMware compatibility guide. Click on the first link. Here it will basically show you all the companies, all the servers on which you can deploy VMware's hypervisor. Okay, so this is the link where you can basically figure out everything. I will basically come back come back to this page again and I would show it to you. But for now, this is basically the URL from where you can check it. Okay, I'll come back to this one and I will show it to you. Okay. Now, we were basically talking about hypervisor. So we know what a type 1 hypervisor is. It will basically get installed on the hardware directly. Now, what is a type 2 hypervisor? 
So for example, taking back to the last example, you have a laptop. Okay. On the laptop, you basically decided to install Windows 10. Okay. Now let's say that I want to watch a movie on Windows 10. So I've got this laptop. I want to watch a movie. Now, which application I should use to watch a movie? There are so many applications out there. One of them is basically a VLC player. Okay. So you would say that, you know, you can basically download VLC. Just go to Google, download VLC, and then, you know, you can watch a movie. You know, it works well. Or if you want to listen a song, you have a song file, you can basically listen to the song on VLC as well. Okay. What is VLC? VLC is basically an application. It is an EXE file. Can it run on the hardware directly? If you do not have the operating system, can it run on, can it run on the hardware directly? No, it cannot. It needs a Windows. It needs a platform on which it can run. And then only, you know, you will be able to enjoy your movie. Okay. So VLC is not a complete operating system. It is only an application. Okay. It needs an operating system to work on it. Similarly is a type two hypervisor. So when I talk about a type two hypervisor, this is an exe file. So what you will do is you will have a hardware on this hardware. For example, you have installed windows 11 or windows 10. And then you will install your type 2 hypervisor over here. And then you can basically create your virtual machines. This is what you will do. Okay. Let me tell you from the architectural point of view how they are different. Okay. So in a type 1 hypervisor, you basically have a physical machine. Let's say this is your physical machine. Okay. Let's say this is your Dell machine. Here you have CPU, RAM, network card, and hard drive. Now, what you will do is that here you will install the hypervisor, the type one hypervisor. So the type one hypervisor basically is a complete operating system that gets deployed on the hardware directly. So what you're doing over here is you are deploying the hypervisor directly on the hardware, and then you can go ahead and create multiple virtual machines over here. So you can create VM01, VM02, VM03, VM04, and then you can create multiple virtual machines. Okay. This is a type one hypervisor. This is the architectural diagram. Now, let me talk about from the type two hypervisor. So in a type two hypervisor, you will basically have a physical machine. Let's say this is your physical machine. This is a Dell machine, for example. Okay. And then what you will do is basically first you will install a Windows 10 over here. Then on this Windows 10, you will install your type 2 hypervisor. Okay. And then on the type 2 hypervisor, after this is installed, then you will create virtual machines over here. So this will be your VM01, this is VM02, this is VM03, VM04, and so on. This is the basic difference in terms of architecture on how a type 1 hypervisor will work and how a type 2 hypervisor will work. Now, keep in mind, when you are running enterprise applications, when you are running production, you basically have to run the type 1 hypervisor over here. So for production, it is always a type 1 hypervisor. Okay. And when you have to learn something, when you have to play in the lab, when you have to do some R&D, something at an individual level, when you have to do, then you can basically go with a type 2 hypervisor. This is at the individual level. So is it bare metal hypervisor type one? Yes. So the type one hypervisor is bare metal. You basically deploy it on a hardware directly. This is how a type one and a type two architecture differs. Okay. Now let me give you some examples of a type one hypervisor. So for VMware, the type one hypervisor is called ESXi. Okay. Their type two hypervisor is VMware Workstation. Then you have Fusion if you are running a uh, Mac operating system. Then these options are available for you as a Type 2 hypervisor. Now, my question is, do you have any doubts, any questions, any concerns when it comes to a Type 1 or a Type 2 hypervisor? So what I explained to you till right now about Type 1 or Type 2 hypervisor, if you have any questions on it, please let me know. 
sir bare metal server also getting any voice is there now no. some no. dell server no. getting no so what you will say is basically when you will call up dell and when you will tell them that you want a server you will tell them specifically do not install any operating system on it the hard drive will be blank okay okay and you, you see i mean cisco also getting in a cisco some any voice server that you there. buy any uh -huh. server that you buy you have to basically tell the uh, vendor do not put any operating system on it i have to install hypervisor on it i will do that myself the vendor also can do that for you if you tell hp to install esxi they will do that for you if you want but if you do not want them to do that for you you basically tell them that you know you, you do not install anything on your uh, hardware just ship me a bare metal server they will do that for you okay before you before before going to production we are asking to the we will not install the bare metal without any os correct that, so right? so you will call uh, you will call hp no you will mm. you will call up hp and you will say that you know i want a physical server hp mm. will say okay tell me the specification you will say this much cpu this much ram and then hp will say give me money you will pay money to hp okay so at that point of time when you are placing the order for the new server at that mm. point of time you will tell hp do not install any operating system i will okay. do that myself uh in case the bare metals are getting in uh, company voice that tell to it's take uh, uh hypervisor 2 model mostly so what so what would basically happen is when you buy an enterprise machine you have luxury of basically saying stanley i will come to that just give me one minute okay stanley i'll come to that question so basically when you are buying an enterprise hardware you have the option of basically saying whether you want an operating system on a hardware or you don't want it it's not necessary kumar that you will always get the uh, operating system it's up to your wish end of the day whichever operating system they will install you have to basically get the license okay so it's up to your wish whether you want operating system on it or not if you are planning to install hypervisor a type 1 which was required in the production in the enterprises then your server should have absolutely no operating system on it like i mentioned earlier a type 1 hypervisor is a complete operating system it goes directly on the hardware keep that in mind okay any questions kumar or you are okay yeah vikash uh, good evening uh, what is the benefit of hypervisor 1 hypervisor 2 So hypervisor will basically give you the flexibility to run multiple virtual machines on one hardware. Okay. So for example, so you have. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, tell me. So I just wanted to say you have one laptop. You are running one Windows ten on it. For example, on one laptop, you can run ten Windows machine on it, or you know seven okay. or six Windows ten on it. So that is what hypervisor is doing for you on that same hardware, giving you the flexibility to run multiple virtual machines. Okay, understood. Thank you. Hi, sir. Hey, Suresh, go for it. Sir, what is the difference of the hypervisor and ESXi? So both are same and both are using same VMware. But what is the difference of this this two one? There is no difference. So when yeah. I say a type one hypervisor, and I tell you, give me an example of a type one hypervisor. Yes, sir. When I say that, you tell me that you know there is an operating system that you need, and I yes. ask you, okay. give me an example of an operating system you will say windows 10 windows 11 yeah. windows 7 okay yeah. so i told you about a type 1 hypervisor now you ask me a question give me an example example is esxi yes it yeah. is a type 1 hype yeah it is a type 1 hypervisor from vmware that you okay. install directly on the hardware and yes. then you create multiple virtual machines on it yes sir Okay. Uh, when uh, when this one is also the VMware also same one, sir. We can take the same process. Uh, from this we can select the image uh, for any any one image. Windows seven, Windows ten, Linux. Anything we are using same VMware also, right, sir? Same. This one also same. Yes, XI VMware also uh, hypervisor. This. What is the difference of these those things? I did And not. And small confusion of this one, sir. Can you please repeat your question? I did not get your question. Yeah, ESXi and VMware and hyper uh, hypervisor. Okay. Uh, this, so this. What is VMware? VMware, VMware is I... name of the company. Yes, sir. Okay, like Microsoft. Yes. Like Google, it is name of a company. Okay. Okay. What is ESXi? ESXi is a product of VMware. Okay. Like Apple. Makes MacBooks, okay. iPhone, iPods, 
Okay. Those are products. So VMware uh-huh. is a company. ESXi is a product. What okay. is ESXi? ESXi okay. is a type one hypervisor. Okay. Okay. I deploy it directly on the hardware. Yes, sir. And then I create multiple virtual machines. Virtual machines. Yes. This is type what it will do. Type one. Type two is there. Uh, uh, you can select the application. VMware workstation. Correct. It will be VMware yeah. workstation, or it will be yeah. basically a fusion. So that is the type two hypervisor. Virtual box. Yeah. Hello. Correct. You are yes. right. Yes. Does Sorry. that answer you? Uh, one at a time, guys. One at a time. I'll come to every one of you. Suresh, you have any questions, or does that answer your question? Yes, sir. I, I will. Okay, sir. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so next just, one. Go for it. Yeah, so just have a little confusion about VMware Workstation and VMware uh, Player. Can you please elaborate it? These both are Type 2 hypervisors. Okay. VMware Player used to be an old generation Type 2 hypervisor. I mean, I don't know if it's av- available now, but basically think about it, that this is both are your Type 2 hypervisors. So like it is replaced by Workstation? Yes. Well, VMware Workstation is the latest one which has a lot of functionality. So it is basically a type two hypervisor for the Windows platform. That got is it. what a VMware workstation is. Got it. Got it. Thank you, sir. No problem. Hello, uh, sir. It. My question is that uh, suppose uh, currently you have a uh, hardware which do not install any operating system right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you are going to install ESXi. Mm-hmm. So how you are going to install multiple VMs on that? I will come to that. Because in operating system, it is... Give me 15 minutes. Okay. Give me 15, 20 minutes. I will come to that part and your question will get answered. Okay. Okay. Just wait for 15 minutes, buddy. 15 minutes. Fine. Anyone else? Uh, Sir, what is that ESXi? What is that I stands for? Sure. Very good question. What is the full form of ESXi? So... ESX, basically, it means over here, Elastic Sky X. Why did they name it? God knows about it, okay? <laughs> don't answer that. Don't ask me that question. Why is it called ESX? I mean, I don't know. It basically stands for Elastic Sky X. That is what the full form of ESX is. I means integrated. Why ESXi? Why the I over here? I will come to this part. Again, wait for 10 minutes. I will answer that question. But for now, just keep in mind, ESXi stands for Elastic Sky X Integrated. Any other question? Hello. Go for it. Hello. Uh, Actually, some vendor also provide the uh, customized OS also. Mm -hmm. So, So, what about that? Okay. So, um, very good question. Uh, l- let me say that. Now, let's say that you buy a server. Now, for example, this server can be from Dell. It can be from HP. It can be from Lenovo. It can be from Fujitsu. It can be from Cisco and blah, 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 blah. So many companies are there. Now, the question is, when you install an operating system on a hardware, It is not only the operating system that you're installing. You have to keep in mind drivers and firmware. You have to also patch and upgrade them. Okay. So what would happen is when you have to install ESXi, you first have to verify that whether your hardware is compatible or not. Okay. Like if I ask you to install Windows 10, you can basically take any desktop, any laptop in the world and just install Windows 10 on it. Okay. This is not the case with ESXi. VMware says that if you have to install ESXi, you basically need to make sure that your hardware is compatible or not. Now, how do you verify that the hardware that you have is compatible or not? So for that, what you have to do is you need to basically head to this website, VMware Compatibility Guide. Okay. You need to choose the version of ESXi that you want to install. For example, this is the latest version, 8.0 update 2. And let's say you have an HP server. Okay. Now you would like to know on which HP server can you install an ESXi 8.0, which is certified from VMware. Here is the list. 
okay these are all the servers from hp which are certified to run esxi 8.0 update 2 similarly you can you know change the vendor for example you want to put cisco over here put cisco over here and now you want to check that how many cisco servers are compatible are tested and are verified to run esxi 8.0 update 2 here is the list okay so vmware says that if you have to install esxi on any hardware you need to make sure that the hardware is certified it is compliant how do you verify you basically verify it from here what is the difference in these versions of course there are so many okay so with every version there is something new which is always coming up if you would like to know that what is new that has basically released so you basically just type over here release notes we fear 8.0 update 2 it will give you a link you can go to this url and it will basically tell you what is new with every feature release there are so many things that they you know roll out there are bug fixes enhancements you know there's so many things they do that so it's very hard to keep a track that what is the exact difference between all of them the best is to refer to the documentation to get to know about this any other question anyone has okay hello everybody hey go for it omar uh, yes uh, it's it's possible to install uh, iver v the product of uh, microsoft on on uh, v x e i and yes, there's a virtual will... machine you can do and we will create almost uh, vmware on uh, on this so what you're saying is you have a physical box from hp yes on this physical box you install esxi and then you yes. want to create a virtual machine and then on this virtual machine you want to install hyper v and okay. then within that hyper v you want to create we'll one create... more virtual machine and then yeah. install windows 10 on it if this is something that you want to do the answer yes, is yes a, you can do. okay and uh, the performance of uh, the hp server physical uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's good or uh, we'll say something uh, not correct now what you're doing over here is omar very good question you are basically doing two layers of virtualization so this is layer 1 this is layer 2 and then on the so, third layer you are basically running your sorry. application over here this is not uh, recommended so if you have to run a windows 10 application i would say within the esxi create a vm install windows 10 and run it over here directly you have correct when you have esxi what is the point of deploying a hyper v you get the point there is no point yes. of deploying hyper v because you are doing a lot of layers of virtualization and which is not good for the performance vmware says so, that if you want good performance install create vm directly on the esxi and then go for it so it's not recommended this uh, this solution no what i told you technically it is possible but uh, should technically you do it's possible, it but performance is it. not recommended yes you will not get okay. the performance because you're doing a lot of layer of virtualization that's the reason okay thank you so no problem sir hyper v is the microsoft version no yes so okay if you have a hyper v can install you can install the os 2019 2006 right yes uh, if you direct not connect to the hyper v before os you can install the hyper v no I mean, you can do it. I mean, I don't know Hyper V to be honest because I don't work on the technology. Okay, now let me move on. How many VMs we can create, or any limit for that? No, there is no limit, Abhishek. You can, if you have a monster ESXi. When I say a monster ESXi, let's say that you have a ESXi with three terabyte of RAM. You have a CPU which has basically hundred and ninety two cores on it. and you have a lot of hard drive now how many virtual machines you can create 
by the way abhishek this is a very good question that you have created that you have asked okay now okay this question is for everyone uh, 32 let me repeat the question i have a monster server it has 3000 gb of ram 3 terabyte of ram i have 192 cores on this one box a lot of hard drive okay how many virtual machines i can create if you want you can write it on the chat 192. some number sorry 192? 192 okay okay anyone else go for it unmute yourself or just put it in the chat 45000 vms nice 100 <laughs> 1024 okay sir certain limit is there na 32 vms in one exercise no there is no limit 1024 to, to, to the performance of uh, one machine very virtual good point machine. very good point but my question is how many virtual machines you can create sir yes sir but uh, one virtual machine has take one core right no it will not but take this, one uh, this monster so vm has one level for that sorry is there any threshold level for that is there any threshold level for that no there is no threshold you can create as many vms as you want i mean uh depends on the ram and the cp and the cpu the vm uses sir, that's the, that's the, the answer sir i have small doubts sir hang on i'll answer every question so uh... but hang on hang on i'll answer the every one questions but let me first tell you my answer okay yes yes and then i will i can basically take your questions so when you have a monster server okay i am asking you how many virtual machines you can create you can create as many virtual machines as you want on an esxi there is no technical limit okay you want to create 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 100 200 virtual machines there is no limit you create as many virtual machines as you want my question is now how should or how many should you be creating theoretically okay you can create as many vms as you want but should you be creating as many vms as you want no the answer is it, it will depend on the usage on the performance that is absolutely right now let's take an example i have 3000 gb ram over here okay let me wipe off everything and let's say on the server i have got 3000 gb of ram but for example i create one virtual machine over here i install sap on it and i give 1300 gb of ram over here i am running an erp solution sap is a absolutely hungry you know application and for example to this virtual machine i give 1300 gb of ram okay i create two virtual machines similarly with this configuration i again run sap over here and i give 1300 gb of ram so my two virtual machines are basically now consuming 2600 gb of ram i have 3000 and i have already given 2600 so the question is that should i be creating a third one no you should not because you have already exhausted almost all the amount of ram that you have okay so you can create a lot of virtual machines on any esxi but how many should you be actually be creating it depends on the utilization of the virtual machine it basically depends on one word answer workload what is the kind of workload that you are running over here if you are running only windows 10 machines with basically you know 6 or 7 gb of ram then you can create a lot of windows 10 machines over here and every machine will basically get 6 gb of ram 6 gb of ram you have 3000 gb of ram you can basically create a lot of them okay but it all depends on the workload the kind of workload that you are running on the esxi that will depend on how many virtual machines should you actually be creating on an esxi now go for your questions if you have there is, a, there is a depend upon the process uh, right processors processors it will depend how many cpus you can allocate to a virtual machine yeah the then how can you use the core types also when you have create the vmware that will be take the uh, no. uh, core what means would, how many cores 
Now, what would basically happen is when you have a physical server, yes, sir. on that physical server, you have a CPU. Yes. Now, on a CPU, for example, you have four cores. Let's keep it simple and let's say that you have got four cores over here. Yes. Okay. Now, on these four physical cores, you will have hyper-threading enabled. And then you will basically get eight logical processors. Whatever you have is basically multiplied into two. That yes. gives you eight logical processors. Now, when you create a virtual machine, okay, you can yes. basically give a maximum of eight vCPUs over here. Okay. Okay. Now these eight vCPUs are basically distributed among these physical cores. Okay. Okay. So the number of virtual machines that you will create, the number of CPUs that you will basically keep allocating to them, they will basically be keep processing it on every physical core. Remember, virtual machine is only virtual. There is no nothing physical over there. Every physical transaction is happening on the physical processor. Questions. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay, thank you. You are right, absolutely, Hossein. So what Hossein basically said is 70%. So VMware says that when you are using your ESXi, you should not go above 80%. Make sure that your utilization of your physical box is below 80%. This is what the VMware's recommendation is. Okay, good discussion over there. Now, let's move on. So we basically spoke about what a hypervisor is. We know what a type one and a type two hypervisor is. Okay. We answered the question, what is VMware? VMware is basically name of a company. Their product, ESXi. Okay. ESXi is a type one hypervisor. And then you can create multiple virtual machines on it. This is what you can do. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Now, let me talk about two terms on ESXi, okay? Then you will understand better. The first term on ESXi is basically sharing. What is sharing over here? What does this term mean? Let me answer that question for you. Okay. Let's take an example. You have a physical machine. Let's say this is your HP server, Dell server, IBM server, whatever server, whatever is your favorite vendor, that is the server that I have, okay? Now, on this physical server, of course, you would have some CPU, some memory, some hard drive. Let's say I've got 100 GB RAM over here. On this physical machine, I've got 100 GB of RAM. Now, we know what a hypervisor is, a type one hypervisor ESXi. It will get directly get installed on the ESXi. So here I have my ESXi. Dhankar, Dhankar please, uh, I would request you not to use your mouse. Uh, please do not uh, draw over here. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. Thank you. So what I do, I have a physical server. On that physical server, I've deployed ESXi. Okay. This is what I've done. Now, what I will be doing is, I will be now creating a virtual machine on this ESXi. So I deployed Win uh, VM01. Let's say I've got Windows 2012 over here. For example, I gave 25 GB of RAM. And for example, I'm running IIS as an application over here. I deploy Windows 02. I installed Red Hat over here. And I gave 25 GB of RAM. And I'm running Nginx over here. I deployed VM03. I have CentOS over here. I'm running Apache. And for example, I gave 25 GB of RAM over here as well. Similarly, I create a fourth virtual machine. I give 25 GB of RAM, I install some application and I install some operating system and some application on it. Okay. So I've got four virtual machines. Everyone has 25 GB of RAM on it. Okay. Now my question to you is, can I create a fifth virtual machine, give 25 GB of RAM and power it on, install some app, some operating system and some application on it? Can I do this? Yes, no, maybe, what you guys think. Put it on the chat. Yes. Yes, but not recommended. Okay, yeah, anyone else? What do you think? Can I create a fifth virtual machine now? So you that says no. Ut utilization. Yeah, good point. Good point. Okay, go for it, guys. There's so many of you on this chat. 
on the zoom and sir any recommendation on that running on yes sir when you say recommendation i did not get your question you can uh, play for the cpu or no no it depends on the virtual machine if you need if you need if you want to run a virtual machine with one cpu with 1 gb of ram of course you can do it if you want to run okay. one virtual machine with 100 gb of ram of course you can do it it depends on your yeah, requirement if, yeah sir i have one go for it if one gb <laughs> means also you can create a lot of virtual machines yes. correct yes. no with yes with one gb of ram okay. you can do it sorry if the two machines out of means uh, if we can uh, in- install another vm sir mm-hmm. if the vm is powered off it is not basically consuming the cpu and the ram ah yes, yes. a vm will only consume the cpu and the ram when it is powered on ah okay okay, okay yeah thank you everyone for answering yes so the answer is if you want technically you can absolutely create the fifth virtual machine okay you can give cpu you can give ram okay but the question will come that how will it get the ram so the simple logical explanation over here is for example i gave 25 gb of ram over here okay but am i consuming entire 25 gb of ram on this operating system so if you check the operating system like i showed you earlier here i have 4 gb of ram on this machine of mine but i'm only using 1.6 gb of ram i'm not using entire amount of ram so what would happen to the remaining you know 3.4 or you know 2.4 gb of ram so what will happen over here is esxi will say to vm to vm01 if you are not utilizing entire 25 gb of ram i am basically going to give it to vm05 so for example i might be using over here 10 gb of ram i might be utilizing 15 gb of ram i might be utilizing 12 gb of ram i i i might be utilizing 18 gb of ram okay no um memory blooming i think anup you were basically referring to ballooning i will come to that later but not now so if you have a virtual machine which has been allocated 25 gb of ram but it is right now only using 10 gb of ram okay so it has a buffer of 15 gb ram okay so similarly would be the case with other virtual machines so vmware would say that if a virtual machine is not utilizing entire 25 gb of ram then esxi will basically share the ram with the fifth virtual machine end of the day keep in mind esxi has the control of the ram it is esxi who is basically managing the ram over here okay so it is on it is basically esxi who can decide who gets the ram and who does not gets the ram okay so esxi will say that i have ram available with me and i can give it to vm05 and then it will basically do that this is how sharing of resources happen okay so when you are running a lot of virtual machines on an esxi if virtual machines are not utilizing the amount of cpu and ram that they have been allocated then esxi will basically share the resources with the other vms which are running or which need that resource doubts confusion question on the point of sharing over here on this concept uh, the, uh, the, uh, go for it one at a time yeah what will happen when the uh, vm uh, yeah, will utilize full i will answer that question uh, after 5 uh, uh, minutes uh, yeah because uh, if it is uh, it's allocated means uh, we going to manually allocate it or it will be automatically yeah, shared manually it is manually yeah, 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 allocated yeah. yes so first of all we we should open the vcenter portal with the console so which is a heavy heavy whenever used. you are whenever you are creating a virtual machine at that point of time you will basically tell that you know how much ram it needs so when you are okay. creating the virtual machine at that point of time you basically define okay okay sure thank you uh, sir what will happen if every vm is trying to utilize its uh, complete resources after 5 like... minutes oh, okay i will answer that question just wait for 5 minutes yeah. so i have the one question uh, so if the ram is 100 gp what is the base esxi will get esxi as an operating system only requires 3 to 4 gb of ram okay uh, the basic operating system 
Okay, but uh, in three GB RAM, we can, how many VXX we can create that one? So, for example, VM we can create. So I answered for example, that question have, earlier. Uh, I yeah, answered that question it, ten minutes back. I, I'm no, not no, sure for, if you. Uh -huh. For example, I have the HP server. It is uh, one twenty eight GB. So mm -hmm. I am installing the ESXi uh, with mm -hmm. the one twenty eight GB. Mm -hmm. So the RAM uh, after installing inside the VM, how many I can assign that one twenty eight GB? So you will always assign eighty percent of whatever RAM you have on the server. Okay. So if you have thousand so, GB of RAM on a server, okay. you will okay. only go up till eight eight hundred GB RAM as utilized. After eight hundred no. GB active RAM, you will not go beyond. This is what the VMware recommendation is. Okay, no, no, no need to worry about the base ESXi. No, you do not have to worry about it because VMware is always recommending that only use eighty percent. The amount of buffer RAM that you are keeping on the ESXi, ESXi okay. is more than happy to do the operations within that, uh, you know, uh, buffer. Okay. Okay, uh, guys, a humble request. If you do not have a question, please mute yourself. Uh, sometimes, you know, we get a background noise. So this can basically uh, hamper others. Thank you for going on mute. Okay, so we now understand the concept of sharing. We know what it is, how it works, and how it allocates the RAM. Let me go to the next question now. Let me go to the next point now, basically, I should say, which is over commitment. It is very important to understand the term what is over commitment. <clears throat> okay. So what would happen is, let's say this is a physical machine that you have. Okay, Dell, IBM, Fujitsu, some server. You have 100 GB of RAM over here. Okay. And then on this 100 GB of RAM, you installed ESXi directly on the hardware. Okay. Now what you're doing is, basically, you created... VM01 over here, you gave 25 GB of RAM, some OS, some application you installed. Similarly, you did that, you did that for VM02, you did that for VM03, you did that for VM04, okay? Everyone has 25 GB of RAM. So what I have done is, I have physical RAM, Okay. It is important to remember these terms. The physical RAM that I have on my server is 100 GB. Every virtual machine, I allocate RAM. I basically tell virtual machine when I'm creating it, that how much RAM you would get. Okay, That is my allocated RAM that I give to every virtual machine. Now, what would happen is, the RAM that you give to a virtual machine, that is called virtual RAM. Keep in mind, it is a virtual machine. It is not a physical machine. Okay. CPU, memory, hard drive, network card, whatever you give, it's all virtual. There is nothing physical over there. Virtual CPU, virtual network card, virtual hard drive, virtual RAM. Okay. Now, what you have done over here is that you have given... 25 GB of RAM to every virtual machine. So you had 100 GB of RAM and you basically allocated all 100 GB of RAM, all 100 GB of virtual RAM that you have allocated. Now you are basically creating fifth virtual machine. You are creating a sixth virtual machine and a seventh one. Okay. Now what you're doing is you are giving 25 GB RAM to all of them. Okay. So now what your allocation is, you have 100 GB of RAM but you have allocated 175 GB of virtual RAM you have allocated. This is a very common practice in the environments. Do not think that you know this is something you should not do or this is something not allowed. Of course, you can do that. And trust me, everyone does it. Okay, hardly you would see clients that you know that do not do overcommitment. Okay, so overcommitment means you have 100 GB of physical RAM. However, when you were allocating RAM to your virtual machines, you have gone above 100 GB. So this is called overcommitment. And when I say everyone does it, let me give you an example. 
I've seen many VMware environments. Okay, a f- a company who is one of the three largest manufacturers of paper in the world. They manufacture paper. You need any kind of paper: chocolate paper, butter paper, magazine paper, A4 sheet paper. That company produces it. Okay, they have their revenue in billions of euros in a year. I mean, that's a top shot company. I've worked for that client. and they basically also do over provisioning okay i have worked for a, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world okay and they also do over provisioning my point is everyone does over provisioning hardly you would find any company which was not doing over provisioning that will be very limited if vmware has 100 customers then think about it that 98 of them do over provisioning or 99 of them will do over provisioning one or two might not do it okay they might have their own reasons they might be a trading um, they might be a stock trading company or they could be an online gaming or betting company i mean those those would be very rare scenarios but generally everyone does it so what you are seeing over here over commitment is a common phenomenon okay so if you have 100 gb of physical ram when you are creating virtual machines and allocating ram on it that is a virtual ram that you are given okay so you created seven virtual machines you gave 25 gb of ram to every virtual machine so basically you allocated 175 gb of virtual ram but you have only phys- physical 100 gb of ram this is called the term over commitment why would you do over commitment you will do over commitment because you know the 25 gb of ram that you have given to the operating system it is not going to use it consume it is not going to use it 100% you know that it might use only 15 gb 12 gb 13 gb you know something 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 it would use it will use it will not use the complete amount of ram okay that is why whenever you are creating a virtual machine always look at the physical ram utilization so when you will deploy an esxi after deploying the esxi you can see how much ram is actually getting utilized so if you see that my esxi is only utilizing 50% of ram then it means you have room to grow more it means you have room to deploy more virtual machine if you see that your esxi is already consuming for example 78% of ram then you should not go ahead and create one more virtual machine if you see that your esxi is already using 60% of ram go for it you can deploy one more virtual machine but this is something that you can do now how much or how many virtual machines you can create it basically depends on the workload how much ram how much cpu what kind of usage it will have it will basically depend on that okay is the term over commitment not clear to anyone please let me know okay now to answer the other question so a question was raised what if the virtual machine is basically utilizing all the amount of ram so let's say i created initially four virtual machines and they all are basically utilizing entire 25 gb of ram i ha- hypothetical scenario four virtual machines their ram utilization is 100% in the operating system okay so here my 100 gb of ram is completely getting utilized can i create additional virtual machines can i give 25 gb of ram can i power them on absolutely you can do it but what would happen to the ram i mean if 100 gb ram is is basically getting consumed within the four virtual machines how will the other virtual machines get ram okay what would happen is here you will have contention what is contention contention means a fight now virtual machines will be basically fighting for ram when virtual machines are fighting for any resource then you will have performance problem and this performance problem you would have on basically all the virtual machines because everyone is fighting to get the ram okay that is why whenever you have to create a virtual machine on the esxi what will happen um you are right peter uh, what will happen uh, when you have the performance problem i do not want to talk about it there is something called as a memory reclamation technique i will talk about it later but not right now but uh basically think about it for now i do not want to you know take you a lot ahead we will go step by step just think about it for now 
if your ESXi is basically running high on memory and if you keep on creating virtual machines on it, every virtual machine will basically run into performance issues. That is what is going to happen. So that is why when you are creating a virtual machine on an ESXi, it is your responsibility because you are a VMware admin to check that whether you have resources or not on the ESXi. If you have, create a virtual machine. If you don't have, tell your management, tell your manager, our ESXi is basically running very high. We do not have room to create more virtual machines. Okay, But if you do, you will run into performance issues. Any questions on the term overcommitment and the scenario that I explained right now? But will the VM alerts? crash due to that? No, the, the VMs will not crash. Of course, you will get alerts that you know you alerts are running high on utilization. Sir, everything you're saying, the only RAM, what about the hard disk? Hard, hard disk. disk. Hmm. So, of course, you have to keep, you know, hard disk space. The reason I'm saying uh, RAM into focus is because there are four resources that you will always require on the virtual machine or in your environment, which is basically CPU, RAM, storage, and a network which is the component that gets utilized the most RAM. RAM gets the number one spot. Second spot is basically consumed by storage. Third spot is basically consumed by CPU. And the fourth one is basically consumed by the network. <clears throat> so RAM is always the one, you know, that we are always taking care of because storage is generally in the environment sufficient. I mean, of course, you need to make sure that you need to have sufficient storage. If you don't have sufficient storage, nothing would work. But RAM is generally, you know, what people refer to because CPU, we are not worried about it. Network, we are not worried about it. Generally, CPU and network are pretty okay in the environments. It is RAM that people are always worried about. And storage, you have sufficient. Okay. okay. Hello. Go for it. Uh, sir, uh, suppose right now your uh, your ESXi is utilizing 78% RAM, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you already created 5 or 7 uh, VMs. Mm -hmm. So suddenly uh, it will show like 100% uh, or 98% utilization. Mm -hmm. Then what will happen? So when the ESXi is running high on utilization in terms of RAM, let's yeah. say, it is running on 98%, 99%. Then basically ESXi will ask the virtual machines to give the RAM back. And this is called a memory reclamation technique. This is a technique wherein ESXi will ask the virtual machines to give the memory back to the ESXi because ESXi is running low on RAM. Okay, What the techniques are, how will it take the RAM back? This is something I will not tell you right now. We will, I will tell you later in the course. But to answer your question, okay. if the ESXi is running high on utilization in terms of RAM, the first thing that will happen is you will have performance issues. And the second thing that would happen is that it will ask for the RAM back. This is what is going to happen. But at that time, uh, VMs will is still working, right? VMs will work. However, the performance will be very slow. Okay. This Thank is what would happen. Uh, because the, the, in this situation, all the virtual machine uh, performance issue will rise or yes. only one? All the virtual. It can happen on any virtual machine. Okay. Okay. At that time, can oh, we increase see. the RAM of? Increase the RAM of what? Uh, ESXi RAM. Our main you... uh, hardware. Right. So you would have to open the box and install a new RAM card in. I mean, uh, that is how you can increase the RAM, right? How would you increase the RAM on a right. physical box? Okay, then downtime will increase. Yes. Thank you. So Dinesh, like I mentioned, there will be no crashing of the applications. If your Windows is running 100% on RAM, your applications will respond slowly. This is what would happen. You would have slowness. You would have performance issues, but your Windows itself will run. It will not crash. Anyone else?
okay let's proceed uh, so uh, so we are using sir uh, this is under uh, you were telling about in the perspection of the cluster side right like if we have more than uh, two or I three will not uh, like let's not let's not use the term cluster right now because i have not explained okay. about it i would request you manju please hold that question when we come to that point then you ask that question okay yeah i am question for the single is exercise standard and host then now so uh -huh. if the hardware has 100 gb of physical ram then okay mm -hmm. so you we have already been uh, created four vms four mm -hmm. vms into 25 gb is equal to 100 gb okay mm -hmm. if i deploy like n number of vms okay mm. not one uh, like 6 or mm. 7 or 8 vms okay mm. so if if i deploy a customer doesn't know and even even the engineer mm. doesn't know like we have mm. enough resources on it okay mm. I, I i used to deploy n number of vms like uh, 10 mm. or 20 vms would that be possible like a what yes technically it is possible but practically you should not do it I mean, okay. technically it is possible. You can create a lot of virtual machines. You can power them on. But practically, you should not do it because every virtual machine on that ESXi will run into the performance issue. That's the reason. Okay. I think, uh, is it under the hyper-threading concept? Like, uh, sir, would, would that work or what in the back end? Hyper-threading is only about CPU, For the CPU scheduling. Right? Yeah. It is only okay. about okay. CPU okay. scheduling. Here we are talking about that you are running massively, you are overrunning the physical resources. When you do not have a physical resource, how would you get, you know, resource? So for example, over here, I've got this virtual machine, I've got this VM over here, this operating system. It only has 4 GB of RAM. Okay, now if I start opening the applications, if I start installing the applications and they want RAM, how will the operating system give RAM to the application when it only has 4 GB of RAM? And if my utilization... Sorry, if my utilization goes to 100%, if I'm utilizing entire 4 GB of RAM over here, and if I still, I am, you know, trying to create new uh, applications, I'm trying to open existing applications, what will operating system do if it does not have a RAM? It will basically freeze. Will, will it fetch it from the ROM or what? I mean, when you have 4 GB of RAM, it can only use 4 GB of RAM, no? ROM yes, is a yes. different concept altogether. Okay, oh, okay. okay. Yes, yes. This is what Thank you, sir. Yeah. No problem. All right. Let's move on. So let me quickly paraphrase. Whatever we have, you know, talked about it so far, so far, let's do a recap. We understood that is VMware important. Okay. Then we spoke about why VMware. We spoke about... What is a hypervisor? We spoke about what is and how is ESXi doing sharing? How ESXi is doing over commitment? Okay. And what would happen if I start deploying a lot of virtual machines? Okay. We talked about best practices that how uh, ESXi should be running. So this is what we have covered so far. Okay. Now, let's move on and talk about the next point. Now, when you are deploying a, an ESXi, where would you deploy an ESXi? You will have a physical hardware. For example, from HP, Dell, IBM, you will get a hardware. And then you will have to basically install the ESXi ISO on it. Okay, this is what you will do. Now, from where would you get the ISO? Okay, now... There are two ways to get the ISO. First is you go to vmware.com and from there you can download the ESXi ISO. That's the first thing that you can do. Okay. But should you do this? You should not do this. So whenever you have to download and install ESXi on your physical hardware, my humble request, never ever download the ISO from the VMware portal. Okay. Let me repeat myself. Whenever you have to install ESXi on a physical hardware, never ever download the ISO from the VMware.com website. Okay. Then from where will you get the ISO? To get the ISO that you have to install on the physical hardware for ESXi, always call up your vendor. 
that is you call up hp and you tell hp give me the esxi iso this is what you will do why why would you call them because always keep in mind when you are installing an operating system on a hardware it is your responsibility to take care of the drivers and the firmwares of the hardware if you download the iso from the es from the vmware portal you only get the esxi iso it does not include your hardware's drivers or hmm. firmware it will not include yeah, that yeah Hey. hey, you have a question? Hmm. Okay, I've muted everyone. If you have any question, go for it. Okay, so what I was explaining over oh. here is so what I was explaining over here is if you get the ISO from VMware, it will only have the operating system. It will not have the drivers and the firmwares of your hardware. Okay. What would happen is if you install this operating system okay, on your hardware, then later you will be worried about drivers and firmwares and then you will have to basically do a manual upgrade of the drivers on the firmwares. You will have to do that. Okay, So what you do, the best option is you call up your vendor. You call up HP and you tell them that give me the ESXi ISO. So HP will basically give you a custom ISO. Okay, which will have the HP drivers and firmwares installed in it, burnt in it. Okay, you download that ISO, follow H, follow HP's instructions, and then you install the ESXi. So how would you do that? Simply go to Google and type HP ESXi ISO download. Now this can be any vendor. Okay, I'm just taking HP example over here, and then you will say. VMware ESXi image for HP servers. Yeah, you will go over here and from here you will basically download the image. Now what HP has done over here, HP has made sure that on this ISO they have burned and they have customized the ISO to include HP's firmware and drivers. You will have to talk to HP to make sure that your hardware is listed over here. It is mentioned over here. So the best would be call up HP technical support. You will have a valid contract with them. Let them know that you're looking for an HP uh, ESXi image. Tell them the uh, hardware that you have. ProLine, Deagle 380, Generation 10, 11, whatever you have. You know, Tell them about it. They will tell you that from where you can get the ISO. How to install it how to get the drivers and firmwares installed first, then followed by the uh, ESXi image that has to be deployed. This is something that HP will tell you. So you do not have to worry about it. Okay, just go ahead with the deployment. You will get to know about it. You just basically follow the article and then you, know, you will be able to deploy it. Okay, you see that HP has custom image for 8.0, update one, update two, update three. So this is the way basically you need to get it. And it will tell you that you know which hardware you have, and then you know you will have to basically now log into the HP portal. So here it will basically take you to the HP portal or to the VMware portal, and then you know you can probably download it and get that HP ISO. This is what you need to do. Okay. So again, keep in mind whenever you're installing the ESXi ISO, to get the ISO, refer to HP. Get the image from your vendor because it will include the drivers and the firmwares. That's the reason. Okay. Now, when you're installing ESXi, there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. The first thing is that your hardware should be certified. Okay. How would you check that? Whether your hardware is certified or not is basically you will go over here. You will go to VMware compatibility guide and make sure that your hardware is compatible. It should be listed over here. The first thing that you need to do is that your hardware is compatible. This is absolutely paramount. Okay. I cannot stress enough. This is a mandatory step. Think about it. Absolutely mandatory. Okay. This is a mandatory step that the hardware should be compatible. Second thing, get the ISO from the vendor. The ESXi that you have to install, this is a complete operating system. So you will get the ISO from the vendor. 
okay do not download it the plain simple basic iso from the vmware portal because that will want that will not include the drivers and the firmwares and then you will run into these issues okay keep this in thing in your mind okay now let me show you basically how the installation is done okay how do you install an esxi uh, on a hardware let me quickly show you that and then we will basically wrap up our today's session now to install an esxi now what i'll be doing is basically i will be now going ahead and uh, creating a virtual esxi this is what i will be doing and there i would be installing it so i have a lab and on that lab i have already installed esxi okay here on this lab i will go ahead and create a new virtual machine and on that virtual machine basically i will be deploying an esxi just to let you know if you take an official training from vmware they will do the same thing for you they do not give you physical boxes to install esxi they also give you virtual machines on which you install esxi just to let you know now what i will do is i will quickly create a virtual machine i will give it a name as test esxi i will say that i want to install and esxi what these parameters are i will tell you everything but for now i just want to show you basically how the installation would happen okay i'll give some ram i'll give some memory i'll give 40 gb ram that's more than enough let me map my iso let me change the network let me change map my iso okay i decided to map my eye so this is all looking okay i hit next i hit finish i create test esxi i power it on and basically what would happen is with any operating system when you boot from the iso it will basically say loading files like if you install windows it will say windows is loading files and blah 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 similarly vmware is doing over here as well So VMware is basically right now booting from the ISO. So that is why you see over here it says loading ESXi. It is basically trying to read the ISO file that you got from your vendor. You are booting your physical box on that ISO. That is why what you see over here. Okay. Now VMware is going to basically run. So here what you will see on your physical environment is. the name of your physical machine so for example if i had an hp server it would have listed over here that you know this is an hp server here it shows me the processor here it shows me the ram here it basically talks about which version of esxi you are installing this is what it shows you over here now this window that you see the gray and the yellow window that you see over here this is called dcui this means direct console user interface okay think about it this is a console interface on of every server so for example on hp you would have ilo on dell you will have drack okay so when you install a physical box in a data center how would you control it remotely how would you install the operating system uh, you know remotely it is by these tools every hardware manufacturer basically gives you a tool via which you can manage your hardware outside the operating system okay so this is basically called dcui window in vmware so whenever someone says that you know what is dcui always remember they are referring to the console of the physical hardware when you open the console of the physical hardware the console screen then this window will come up okay now once it reaches over here then my installation prompt will come of the esxi and how the installation would happen then basically i would show you over here any minute it should move now and then basically i will tell you so when you're installing esxi mouse is not needed okay there is no use of mouse you basically have to only use your keyboard and then you will do the installation okay now the first screen that you will see over here is basically about confirming your hardware compatibility so i told you know when you are installing esxi the first thing which is absolutely paramount is for you to verify that whether your hardware is compatible or not so what you need to do 
is you need to make sure that your hardware is basically listed over here. If your hardware is not listed over here, then this means that you are installing ESXi on a non-certified hardware. Okay. Now the point is, if you want, you can install ESXi on a non-certified hardware, but you will not get support from VMware. Okay. If you want support, that is tomorrow. If you run into issues with the ESXi, you will call up Microsoft. You will call up uh, VMware, the technical support, and you will basically say, "Help me with this issue." It is important that your hardware is supported. If your hardware is not supported, VMware will not help you. Now read this first line. I cannot stress enough. Okay, read the first line. VMware ESXi 8 installs on most systems. That is, if you have any hardware under the sun, if you try installing ESXi, it might work. So you see the first line, ESXi 8 installs on most systems. Any machine on earth, if you want to install ESXi, chances are high that the deployment will go okay. Okay. But only systems on VMware compatibility guide are supported. So VMware on the very first screen makes it clear that you have to make sure that your hardware is compatible. And then VMware says, go to this URL and make sure that your hardware is compatible. Okay. So VMware on the very first screen has basically told you to make sure that your hardware on which you're installing ESXi should be compatible. And you need to go to this URL and make sure that your hardware is compatible. Once you have verified that your hardware is compatible, go ahead with it. If you are installing ESXi on a non-supported hardware, tomorrow when you will run into issues, you will not get support from VMware. Keep that in mind. VMware will take less than two minutes to figure out that you're running on a non-supported hardware. Okay. They will take two minutes and they will figure out that you're not that you're running ESXi on a non-supported hardware and they will not give you support. So that is why on the very first screen you see that the hardware has to be compatible. Let's say that I verified that my hardware is compatible. I will hit enter and I will agree. Okay, I will proceed. Now it is license agreement. Whether you like it, or whether you don't like it, you have to agree with the license agreement. So you hit F11 and you proceed. Now it would show you where can you install the ESXi. So it will show you basically your hard drive. So I see that I have one hard drive of 40 GB. I will choose that hard drive. It will tell, it will ask me that uh, which is your keyboard layout. I would say US default. And then it will ask me basically to enter a root password. Why a root password? Because ESXi has a Linux kernel. Linux ESXi has a Linux kernel because of which it is asking me to enter a root password. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now here I need to specify my password. I'll specify welcome at the rate one, two, three. It is important that the password has to be exact. Okay. If the passwords are not exact, it will not let me proceed. It says that my virtualization is not supported. That is fine. I have to make a tweak over there and then it will work. Okay. And then it says that you are about to install ESXi on your 40 GB hard drive. If you do that, everything will be gone. Everything will be repartitioned. Are you sure you want to do that? And I say, yes, F11. And I proceed with the installation. This is how you install ESXi. And this is what the procedure is. If you install ESXi in a lab or if you install ESXi on a physical server, this is what you need to follow to install the ESXi. It will take less than two minutes. ESXi will be installed. You need to reboot it and then you are good to go. Okay. Now, when the installation is done, then you basically need to give, uh, you know, like a static IP if it has already picked up an IP from DHCP and then, you know, access it and then basically do the thing. That basically brings me to the end of our first class today. Okay. So once the installation is done, tomorrow I would show you that, you know, once the installation is done, how do we access it? What do we do next? And blah, blah, blah. Tomorrow we'll talk about the next thing. Okay. So before um, I end today's session, doubts, confusion,
question anything that you have not understood please let me know sir uh, are we covering complete vmware vsphere 8 uh, training yes. in this yes okay so how like uh, are we getting any uh, continuous like uh, to weekends classes only or like yes. uh, weekdays weekend classes only same time okay okay and one more thing sir is a generic uh, generic uh, query like uh, vmware was already been acquired by the bro broadcam right so uh -huh. how will be the future of the vmware then so because nowadays the uh, people are uh, trying to go for the devops and all public cloud platforms and all right so was was quite bit worried about uh, the private cloud enterprises so could you please explain there are couple of things you need to keep in mind first there are 85 million virtual machines which are running on vmware platform let me repeat that number 85 million virtual machines are running on vmware platform do you think it will take a month or a two to basically get rid of 85 million virtual machines that's not going no. to happen second point you talked about running everything on devops everyone is going to kubernetes and all that that's fine but is everyone doing that answer is no okay moving to container i mean it's very new i mean i'm not saying that you know it's not a robust technology you should not move it but every customer would not do that that's what my point is it will take time to basically reach over there okay and uh, again everyone is not favoring containerization i mean yeah you will have to learn so many things and you have to manage so many things answer to your third question cloud everyone is moving to cloud i'm not sure if you have heard about reports there are blogs which basically say cloud is more expensive than running your environment at the on prem environment people say that you know it's better to run your own environment than to move it to the cloud everyone has a different theory everyone has a different requirement the customers that you might have seen the environment that you might have seen might be very small if you talk about huge environment let me give you an example sbi state bank of india if folks who are not in india or who are not aware sbi is india's largest government bank okay they are vmware's customer in every branch of vmware um, i'm sorry in every branch of sbi So they have close to about four thousand or five thousand or maybe more branches. They are running VMware. They are dedicated VMware customers. You think that tomorrow SBI will start running everything on AWS? You think that everything uh, SBI will move everything to Azure? That's never going to happen. Okay. There are customers who will always retain their on premises, and till the time you don't taste the other side, you would always say that you know cloud is the best. when you reach the cloud then you actually get to know what the problems are so my point my point that i'm trying to make over here is not everyone will move to cloud not everyone will do containerization and there are 85 million workloads over there okay you need this technology for next 10 years i don't know what would happen after 10 years but for next 10 years you absolutely need it okay, okay and okay. about the broadcom acquisition mm -hmm. this is not the yeah. first acquisition that has happened with vmware earlier vmware was yeah. part of emc then it became dell yeah yeah, yeah 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 and that got spin off i mean acquisition is part and parcel of vmware's journey so don't have to exactly. worry about it yeah thanks thanks a lot sir so it was a great session yeah so it was clear understanding each and every concept yeah no problem guys anyone has has any question before we wrap up uh, today's call Uh, so i have one question uh, if we have the uh, esxi we can we can customize the image it's possible yes if you want to inject your own drivers you can do that but theoretically you should not do it why because yeah. when you go for it yeah, yeah you can can i wanted to oh. say that you generally don't do it why don't you do it because when you buy a hardware when you buy a server you basically get all the components from that manufacturer the network cards okay. the storage adapters and everything you will get it from that manufacturer and no no there is there is any uh, any way to customize the image for example i asked of course you can do it just google up 
how do I customize my ESXi image? You will get so many articles, and you can customize okay. it. No problem. Okay, thank. Okay, so what would happen is basically tomorrow we will meet again, and uh, tomorrow same time. One more. So, so please, can so I ask a question? question from my chair? Go for it. One at a time. Question. Okay, so yeah. um, uh, it's a uh, VMware. Have your personal VMware? Is it the same as having a, your pest private cloud? How how does it relate? Repeat your question again, please. Um, having a personal VMware or installing a VMware, is it the same concept as yes. having a private cloud? So VMware, how, how do, yeah, how does VMware, it relate? Right. So VMware is basically a hypervisor. ESXi is the hypervisor. So to manage your environment, let me mute everyone. There's too much of background noise I, I get. Okay. So basically what would happen is VMware is basically giving you the hypervisor. When you get the hypervisor, then on top of that, you can run multiple virtual machines. Now you can have the environment in your own facility, or you can run it on the cloud. Like I showed you, you can run VMware on Alibaba, IBM, Oracle, Google, AWS, any cloud you want, you can run it over there. Does that answer your question, Stanley? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. I get it. Thank you. No problem. Next one, please. Sir, one more question. Is there any license? Between like yes, a, a professional or standard, is there any license is there? Correct. So ESXi needs a yeah, it needs a license. Tomorrow we will talk about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Tomorrow session so time, same shown, time. Sorry for the interruption. As you shown, one way to install a ESXi. Is there more way to install ESXi? Yes, you can install it over the network. You can do an automated deployment if you want. You can do that. But again, those have their own specific requirements. I mean, if you're doing a network boot, it has its own benefits, but it comes with own pros and cons. I can talk about it tomorrow. Just remind me tomorrow and I will talk more so about it. So you are going to show those uh, installation also? In no, that's not, that's not included in the official curriculum. I'm only proceeding okay. what is there in the official curriculum. What VMware teaches you after you pay $1,000, I am only <laughs> following those options. Okay, okay. Thank you. No problem. What is the theme for tomorrow? Tomorrow we are going to talk about that ESXi works on RAM, license, when you have a lot of ESXi's, how do you manage them? And yeah, so many things. It's, it's, it's endless. <laughs> There's so many things to talk about. This is the first class only, okay? So I, I need to tell you a lot of things. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. Thank you buddy. for this session. Thank no you, problem, sir. Guys. Thank you. Thanks for I want to thank you all for joining today. Thank you for taking the time out. I am happy that you find this uh, session informative. You are learning something new. This is, uh, I, that makes me happy. And uh, let's meet tomorrow. Same time, you will get the Zoom link on the WhatsApp uh, group. And let's meet tomorrow and continue. Yeah. Thank All right, guys. Thank you. you take care. Thank Bye. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.